In this video, I'm going to go over support vector machine and how to implement this in Worker. So support vector machine, abbreviated as SVM, um, is a type of algorithm that is used in machine learning for both classification and regression tasks. Okay. So initially, SVM was developed for binary classification problems. Although over, over the years, um, other extensions have been uh, developed to support multi-class uh, classification and regression problems. Now, the adaptation of S SPM, um, you know, to, to be used for regression problems is called support vector regression or short for SVR. Okay. Now, this SVM was also developed for numerical or continuous input variables, right? Although when you're using a worker, it will automatically be converted to nominal value. The nominal values be converted to numeric values, right? So uh, again here, SBM just helps us to classify things, so objects to different groups, right? Uh, of, of uh, you know, uh, different groups based on some features that we might have, right? So it works by drawing a line or boundary between two groups of data so that the line is as far away from the nearest data points, okay, uh, as uh, from each group as possible. So let's look at an example here. So suppose we have a data set which comprises of pictures from different fruits, right? So for example, here, the apples here, the red data points uh, correspond to apples, right? And then the blue data points here corresponds to oranges, right? And we want to train a machine learning algorithm to identify them based on maybe size, right? And color, right? So size and color, okay? So SVM in this case, will try to find a line, right? A line, so let's say this is the line, okay? In a two uh, line, especially if you're, you know, projecting this in a two dimensional space, right? Or a hyperplane, if if you um, in a high dimension projecting your uh, you know uh, projecting your data right in a in a high dimension right that tries to separate these two classes okay as much as possible now this line is what we refer to as the decision boundary okay so this line that we are trying to draw that separates these two classes of apples and oranges is what we refer to as the decision boundary or the line of a hyperplane, okay? Uh, again, so in this case, uh, in our example here, we're trying to find the best possible line of boundary that separates the apples from oranges based on their size and color, okay? So to do this, our SVM just looks for data, data points that are closest to the decision boundaries. So in this case, we have this, and we have this, and we have this, okay? Uh, as far as apples is concerned. And then we have this that is closer to the decision boundary, this one and this one. So these data points is what we refer to as support vectors because they are closest to the decision boundary, okay? Now, it then tries to draw a line or boundary that maximizes the distance between the support vectors and the decision boundary, okay? This is what we refer to as the margin. So you can see here, so we have this, uh, you know, imaginary uh, dotted lines over here. So the goal here is to maximize this distance, you know, from one support vector uh, from the other class to another support vector. So we want to maximize this as much as possible. This is the objective here, okay? So once the decision boundary is drawn, SVM uh, tries to predict the classification of new fruits based on, um, you know, the size and color, for instance, so if SVM determines that a new fruit is located on the side of the decision boundary that corresponds to, um, in this case, apples. So let's say we have a data point here, right? So it will predict this as an apple, okay? Okay, so it just looks by, you know, looking at the points closest to the decision boundary called support vectors, right? So these points are just used to calculate the maximum margin. Okay, or the maximum distance between the decision boundaries, right? Uh, and the closest points, okay? So uh, another thing to keep in mind is that if these two classes, right? If these two classes of apple and oranges cannot be separated by a linear boundary, okay? So what happens, SVM now has another neat trick. We call this a kennel, 
right? So this kernel uh, trick, okay, what it does is just tries to map the data into a high dimensional uh, space, okay, using this hyperplane, right? Especially if you have a large data set, okay, where just a 2D or linear binary cannot be drawn, okay? So lastly here, unlike, you know, SVM, uh, if we are gonna be using SVR here, SVR basically just uh, draws or finds a line that separates the training data into classes, right? So it just finds a line that best fits or minimizes the error, right? Remember, this is for regression problem, uh, the error of a cost function, okay? So how it does this is just using an optimization process, right? That considers these data points or data instances in a training data set that are closest to the line, right? These ones that are closest to the line is that which that minimizes the cost, okay? So these instances, again, will just be referred to as the support vectors, hence the name of this, um, you know, uh, algorithm, okay? So in summary here, we can say SVM is just a powerful algorithm that uses to classify data into different groups based on the features. By drawing, um, in this case, we have a boundary, okay? A boundary or a decision boundary here or a hyperplane or a line that separates them as much as possible, okay? And it does this by finding the support vectors, which are just the one closest to the decision boundary and makes maximizing the, the margin between them, right? So this distance here, maximizing that, okay? All right, now that we know that, let me uh, go over to Worker. So to do this, the first thing is to click on the choose button. And then uh, we head to the uh, button function group. Okay, so we wanna select this. So you can see from the tooltip, this just implements the support vector machine for regression. So click on that, and then we click on the name of algorithm to uh, sort of uh, configure some of the parameters. So from here, we can see we have the C parameter. So this sub C parameter is just called the complexity parameter in Worker, okay? Uh, this just determines how flexible, right? The process of fitting a line can be. A value of zero here means that there are no violations of the margin, whereas the default of one is just, actually this is just the default, right? Another key parameter here uh, is the kernel to use, right? We already have here. So when I click here on the name, um, uh, sorry, when I click here, choose, you can see there are other different, you know, kernels that you can use. Uh, another one here is RDF kernel. By the way, the poly kernel here um, is just the default, expo uh, has a default exponent of one. This is just equivalent to using the linear kernel, right? This is another very powerful and popular a kernel is the RBF. RBF just stands for radial basis function kernel. Uh, again, this is most capable for uh, polygons and complex shapes, you know, that can fit your training data, okay? So again, here, it's just a good idea to try different values for your complexity. Uh, and this depends on the problem at hand and see which works best. So in our case here, we're just gonna uh, leave that as a default, click on okay, right? So with that, I'll just click on start here. And uh, it's just gonna take a few seconds to do that. And you can see the root mean square here is 5.117. So performs marginally worse compared to all the other different, um, you know, uh, algorithms that we've looked at, yeah. All right, so the next one I'm gonna be looking at is the multi-layer perceptron. 